Hey everyone, it's David Herrera here from the Tips team, and I'm here to give you 10 new features that have been added to Google Classroom over the last year or so. Now, if you've been keeping an eye on our YouTube channel, you may have seen that there's been a couple of videos that we posted about different features that Google Classroom has updated itself with. Now, this is going to be a quick look at 10 of those features. If you want to explore them further, make sure that you go to our YouTube channel and check out those long form videos that are going to dive a little bit deeper into how these things work. So without further ado, let's take a look at our first new feature, and that is going to be practice sets. So practice sets are located over in the resources section on the left side. When you click on them, you're going to see that you get this new window that gives you two different options for creating things. You have new practice sets and you have video activities. So practice sets are essentially interactive worksheets that students can work on. I'm going to show you one that I've already created. And this is an example of a math practice set. When students are working with these, um, they are able to try them as many times as they like. They can handwrite their answer or they can type it out and they can also check to see whether they get the answer right immediately. So for example, I can type in an answer, click check, and it's going to show me whether I got it right or not. It also gives students resources or hints in terms of how to answer the questions. And so that is a really neat feature that students can keep using to be able to practice in your classrooms. Now, the nice thing about uh, practice sets is that you can assign them within classwork the same way that you would assign them, uh, that you would assign a, a written assessment or a quiz on Google Forms or anything like that. Now, um, just to show you another example really quick, here's an example of chem and you can do multiple choice questions, you can do checklist questions, you can do written response questions. Um, so really the sky's the limit and they're a really neat feature for engaging students. Now, on to number two, we have video activities and video activities actually live in the exact same spot. There's a, a little button here that says new video activity. I'm going to show you what it looks like. A video activity allows you to assign a video to students and as they watch the video, there's going to be questions that pop up. So you can see here we have multiple choice questions, we have check boxes, and we have open-ended questions that we can ask students. You can also select a start point and an end point to a video so that you don't have to make the students watch the entire video. Okay? And so I'm going to show you what this looks like as a student really quick. Um, as the student is watching this video, you will see that it starts right at the five second mark that I wanted to and it pauses the video to let me answer the question that my teacher has assigned for me. So this is a really neat feature to be able to get students to watch for the resources for your classes like YouTube videos. Moving on to number three, we have the to review section of Google Classroom. So I'm just going to head back to the home screen. And on the left side, you will see that I have a section that says to review. And this allows me to, at a quick glance, take a look at how are my different assessments being completed, how many students have turned them in, how many have I graded. And so it's a really quick way for teachers to check how much do I need to mark, how many students haven't handed in my stuff. And so in here, you can see the different assessments that I've handed out to my students that I've put them that I've put into my coursework. You can select it per course or you can look at all of the courses at the same time. So a really quick and easy way to check how your assessments are doing and how many you still have outstanding. Now on to number four, we have the calendar view. Now the calendar view is also on the left side, right above resources. And in here, we can take a look at what does my week look like in terms of assessments? Do I have any assessments that are due? Okay, so I've made an assessment, my practice set of algebra due on Thursday. I can see that it's right there. If I click on it, it'll take me right to that assessment. I can also go to next week and see what that looks like. I've assigned an assessment for Monday. So the calendar view is just another way to take a look at your Google uh, classroom courses and take a look at what do your due dates look like. Now, on to number five, we have excusing assignments. 
So this is a really useful feature for if you have students who for some reason or another are not able to complete an assessment, but if you've already assessed them um, in another assessment, uh, let's head into here, intro to algebra. Um, let's say that this student uh, will not be completing this assignment. If you click on the three buttons for settings right here, I can go to excuse and then that mark is not going to show on there. Now, of course, this is only if you're using Google Classroom to keep track of your marks, as in a grade book, which I will get to in a second. So number six, closing submissions. And that's actually right here. If I am done taking in assignments from students and I want to be able to have a conversation with students, for example, before they submit an assignment for me, there is a little switch right here in the um, submissions section of my assessment and I can just click on this and that is actually going to stop students from being able to submit an assessment into you. So just to take a look again at how I can get there from my stream, I can open up an assignment and then under the student work tab, there's the button right there for accepting submissions. And again, if you'd like to excuse a student, you have the three buttons right there. Okay, on to number seven, we have Google Analytics. And so that actually lives right here on the home screen. So I want to take a look at the analytics for this course. There's a little button and analytics again is just another way for me to take a look at at a glance information about my courses. Now, let's take a look at a course that I actually have analytics for. And you will see that in this assessment right here, sorry, in this course right here, I can look at average grade of students. I can look at assignment completion, how many students have completed assignments, how many students have been active in the last however many days that I've selected. I can change how many days I'm looking back. I can look back 90 days um, all the way back to since August. Now, I can also see per student what is the assignment completion percentage? Um, how many missing assignments that one student has? What is the average grade of that student? And weeks since they've been active in classroom. So lots of very useful information in there. Now on to number eight, sharing classwork. So if I have collected a bunch of information on my classwork tab. I'm very happy with how I've organized everything in here. And I have a teacher that asks me like, hey, can you share Google Classroom with me? There is the ability to share and copy the entire classroom, um, but you can now share just the classwork tab by clicking on the share classwork button on the top right of the classwork tab. Uh, you can click on allow teachers to access via link, and then you can share this link with other teachers who would like to be able to copy this. Now, please keep in mind, as of uh, this video, you cannot copy the classwork onto another one of your very own classrooms. You can only copy the entire classroom, not the classwork tab. Okay, so um, moving on to number nine, we have grade book. So what you can do is once you are looking at your classroom, you're going to head over to the grades section and that is where it's going to list all of your students, the assignments, how, uh, how well they did in those assignments. And if you wanted to, you can also go into the settings and actually change how those grades are shown. You can change the grading scale. So for example, if you'd like to use letter grades instead of a percentage, if you'd like to use a proficiency scale or a four point scale, you can uh, go ahead and do that right in Google Classroom. You can also add grading periods, but be mindful that this does not communicate whatsoever with Power Teacher Pro. And so if you decide to dive into this, you may have to do your work twice and then input your marks afterwards into Power Teacher Pro. Now onto the very last um, new feature, which is rich text formatting. And this one's actually been around for a while, but it's very useful to be able to, to change up how I make announcements in my classroom. So in the stream or whenever I'm making a new assignment, Google has now added rich uh, text formatting options on the bottom of my comments. So for example, if I'm making a, um, a new announcement, I say, hello, everyone. 
I can now bold this text or I can italicize it, underline it. I can create a bullet list, maybe a list of items that I want my students to be able to complete. And I can also remove the formatting and it just goes back to normal text. So those are all the 10 new features that Google Classroom has added over the last year or so. Like I said, if you are interested in learning a little bit more about any of these features, please check out the videos in our Google, uh, in our YouTube channel and uh, check them out to learn a little bit more. As always, uh, please check back for weekly videos and if you're interested in having any kind of a professional development session, having us from the TIPS team coming out to your classrooms and your schools to do some presentations, please reach out to your TIPS member and we will be happy to help out. Have an awesome day and thank you very much.